Lady C, can, can we just talk about the actual claim from P Prince Harry? Because it's so despicable to me that he is now trying to undermine the Queen, the late Queen, make out as if she was just some puppet on a string and it was the men in grey suits who told her what to do. Not only is that sexist, Lady C, it also completely misunderstands that the Queen was always in charge. Well, absolutely. She was in the driving seat. She is the person who made the decision. She is the one who threw the Lord Lion King of Arms because he's the person who announced that Harry can't be half in and half out. You know, the Lord Lion is one of the leading courtiers. He's not a man in the grey suit. And, you know, if he was in a position to do it, you can depend on it. He got this directly from the Queen herself. And for Harry to pretend otherwise, he's ki he may be kidding himself, but he's not kidding anybody else. And I don't even think he's kidding himself. I think he and Meghan have embarked upon a very dangerous, damaging rhetoric, which they both know is going to damage the monarchy and they hope is going to boost them with Americans who are of their political persuasion. There's an awfully strong underlying undercurrent to all of this, which is that it is politically motivated so that they can ga gather greater influence and make more money. Now, speaking of Megxit, Lady C, another thing that certainly wasn't touched on in the Netflix doc was the devastating impact Harry and Meghan's departure had on the health of the alien Queen Elizabeth II. According to an insider speaking to the Mail on Sunday, mm -hmm. it really affected the Queen's health. Yes, she was elderly and there were other issues with that. But nevertheless, all the Harry and Meghan claims certainly contributed to that. So, Lady C, is it wrong for Meghan and Harry to claim no responsibility for the damage they so obviously caused the Queen? Well, of course it's wrong. You know, they know that they have damaged her health. Uh, you know, it's in, they not only damaged her health, they hastened her death and they hastened the Duke of Edinburgh's death. And even if they didn't hasten his death, they certainly disturbed the last, well, the closing days of his death, you know, but it's where the Queen herself was concerned. I've been saying this now for over a year, that they were undermining the Queen's health and aggravating underlying health issues in the most detrimental way. I have no doubt that they stole a considerable period of time that she would still have had, had they not put all of this tremendous pressure on her. Because remember, they weren't only attacking her and the family, they were also attacking the Commonwealth. So they were attacking her legacy. They were attacking her life's work and they were trying to negate it. And in fact, remember <clears throat> this program was, the series was done with the possibility that she would still be alive. Mm. And I know that's what I can't get my head around. Attack on the Commonwealth. Yeah, no, I know. It's totally uh, despicable. I guess Phil, Dampier, Harry and Meghan's camp like to say, hang on a moment, wasn't the late Queen more stressed about the troubles with Prince Andrew? It was all stress, wasn't it? You know, she was in her mid-90s. She had to cope with Prince Andrew, said to be her favourite son. She had all the aggravation there. They didn't help. Then, of course, Prince Philip died. So it was all massive. I mean, she had this amazing ability, the Queen, to compartmentalise problems. But, uh, you know, somebody in their mid-90s, the stress and the, and the strain must have been absolutely terrible. And I have to agree with Lady C. I think it probably shortened her life. It's very sad. It's significant they didn't have anything in Netflix about the Queen's funeral. But are they saving that up for a separate programme? I wouldn't put anything past.